to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. It is God's desire that every one of you under the sound of my voice be blessed. Yes, it is God's desire. The Bible said it. It said that he delights in the prosperity of his servant. Thank you, Jesus. So you must recognize the need if you want change in your life. Number two, you must go for knowledge. You must go for knowledge. It's not enough. There are many of us that recognize these needs, but we don't know what to do. What step do I take? Knowledge. Knowledge. It's not enough to recognize the need. Goodness. I'm telling you, I know that there will be a revolution. This teaching, as it is coming, it is going to cause a revolution. Recognize the need. Number two, go for knowledge. Don't allow knowledge come to you. Pursue it. Many of us want knowledge to come free of charge. Great men pursue knowledge. You don't wait for it to come to you. Many people like a wolf. We want to sit down and let God bring it. Great men in life, those who have become blessed in this kingdom, are men who took the pain to pursue knowledge at any cost. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed my people although they are my people it didn't say our people my people that you are god's people does not mean you cannot be affected it says my people are destroyed why for lack of knowledge go for knowledge and in going for knowledge there are two dimensions number one you need what i call a paradigm shift this is undergoing for knowledge a paradigm shift a change of mentality not just information now a change of mentality because there are certain mentalities we have it's not our fault but it's punishing us right now and we must change that mentality a paradigm shift a change of mindset a change of ideology a change of perception and a change of belief when you see the need the next step is to pursue knowledge pursue it like your life depends on it and can I tell you something brothers and sisters the earlier you start the better knowledge will cost you it will cost you time it will cost you your resources it will cost you your ego are you willing to let it down to get knowledge there are many arrogant people that know nothing about finance and they will not humble themselves and learn that you read economics does not mean you understand the kingdom's financial system hallelujah knowledge will cost you your resources there are many of us who are greedy even to ourselves the highest book you have bought in your life was 600 naira and somebody added some money knowledge is costly the bible says buy the truth say it after me say buy the truth he uses a business terminology when he's talking about truth and light and revelation we want everything for free many of us want to be pampered just write out a course on financial prosperity and come and sit down and baby feed me when i'm ready to learn you will give me you will be broke and you will suffer in this life hallelujah 
never entertain that kind of mentality you must tell yourself whatever my parents could not do is not their fault i will arise as that savior and wipe their tears hallelujah the educational system in nigeria unfortunately does not have a package that is designed to give the youth in this country financial intelligence it does not sustain that package in its curriculum so graduates finish school from 100 level all they are looking at is a job is that true i was sharing with the final year students we'll talk about that when we are talking about the natural law so i don't want to go ahead of myself hallelujah job 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 i shared it with them let me just touch a bit of it i told us that nigeria was an agrarian country predominantly is that true from the 40s down to the 60s and then we discovered oil and then it coincided with what we call the industrial age they set up industries and factories and so different people engineers industrialists chemists and so on and so forth got a lot of job companies will come scrounging looking for good students but from the late 90s till today there has been a transition in the world as a global entity and in africa and even in nigeria we have almost left the industrial age to an age that we call the information age what that means to you is that the job of 100 people can be done by one computer what does that tell you 100 people will lose their job that means there must be a paradigm shift everybody say a paradigm shift if you get what i'm sharing with you i was telling the final year students if you remember yesterday i mean the the, the graduation student i told them i said don't worry you will buy the jeep for me don't tell me thank you now it's in the future you will buy the jeep when you see your son playing around you call him and say boy come and sit down here if you play like this you will beg <laughs> hallelujah so knowledge a paradigm shift then number two is understand the economic system of the kingdom still talking about going for knowledge when you have a change in your mentality then you will now understand the economic system listen the kingdom of god is a system it has an administrative structure and it has an economic system every kingdom and every nation has what we call ministry of finance is that true that is responsible for coordinating all its financial activities the kingdom of god is no different there is a way the financial system of the kingdom runs and if you do not know it it may be at your detriment but the lord will open us up to it in the name of jesus then number three after after knowing and understanding the economic system of the kingdom what it is and how it functions number three is that you must apply what you know you must take action and consistently apply what you know for instance there are some of us here that a few things that you'll be hearing are not necessarily new but you have never taken action knowledge is useless when it is not applied consistently hallelujah so while you are seated listening to me make sure that there is a determination in your heart that you are going to put this thing to work the principles that i'll be sharing with you by the grace of god are proven principles people have tested it and it has produced results blessed be the name of the lord there are five things that will help you to take action undertaking action number one conviction you will never act on anything you are not convicted about so you must get this knowledge to a point where it persuades you enough to take action 
conviction number two it takes courage to take action because many people taking action requires breaking the status quo doing something nobody has done in your family doing something nobody has done you must take steps remember peter when they saw jesus christ peter said if it be thou bid me come and jesus said come it was now left for him to take a step and he took the step 1,000 intentions are not up to one action that is taken. 1,000 intentions. Hallelujah. I remember one of my uncles in the village. They gave him a name. His name is Plan. P-L-A-N. The man has been planning till today. Is a retired soldier plan everything when you are talking he said it's, it's on plan I, I i have the plan 10 years he has not done anything i still have the plan hallelujah <laughs> i was talking with my mother this afternoon and she said he's not feeling fine he said <laughs> praise the lord i'm sure he has a plan to be healed too hallelujah it takes conviction you will never act on anything you are not convinced about. Number two, it takes courage to take action. Number three, it takes discipline to take consistent action. Discipline. Consistent action. Regardless of the outcome, consistent action. It takes discipline. It takes a lot of discipline. It takes discipline to tell yourself I must study a book per week. It takes discipline to tell yourself I must listen to this message 10 times. It takes discipline. Listen, in the school of prosperity, convenience is the last thing you receive. Are you getting my point? In the school of prosperity, kick away convenience when you are still on. When you arrive, you can be blessed. Nigerians like convenience. Hallelujah. The youth in Nigeria like convenience. Is there fan or AC in this place? Kai, I'm feeling hot. Whereas there's no fan in your own house, but you come and inconvenience people and make a lot of noise. See, a lot of people, you go to a restaurant and you're harassing everybody. I mean, uh, they, don't have, they don't have a restroom in this place. And we like convenience. Convenience is good. So pay the price. To create one the best way to predict your future is to create it hallelujah it takes consistency to take action consistency conviction courage discipline consistency and finally it takes commitment it takes commitment it takes commitment there are many of us who are afraid of commitment in different areas of our lives because you know that commitment will cost you something say after me in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i'm on my way to better days i'm on my way to lasting financial freedom i'm on my way to being a blessing to myself and everyone around me in Jesus name hallelujah thank you Jesus action you must take action without action whatever it is that you have on plan is a waste there must come a time when you will take action hallelujah now let's examine the concept of prosperity the concept of prosperity all our discussion is going to be from the perspective of the kingdom even when we are talking about the natural laws the concept of prosperity and your ladder will be greater your ladder will be greater your ladder will be greater than the rest. I prophesy to you. 
Your ladder will be greater. Your ladder will be greater. Your ladder will be greater than the rest. For all things are possible. All things are possible. Don't let the devil tell you it's not possible. 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 They are possible. For your ladder will be greater. Your ladder will be greater. Your ladder will be greater than the rest. Prosperity. We're examining the concept of prosperity right now. Hallelujah. So the paradigm shift begins now. We're examining prosperity. The word prosperity comes from the word prosper. And it simply means to do well. The word prosperity, please write it down comes from the word prosper and it means to do well it means to do well your well-doing your well-being let me define prosperity to prosper means to possess a means an ability or power to meet the needs of mankind to prosper in the kingdom means to possess a means, an ability, or power to meet the needs of mankind, regardless of what those needs are. The means, the ability, the power to meet the needs of mankind regardless of what those needs are hallelujah to prosper also means to enjoy the fullness of the blessings of god's life as designed by god himself to enjoy the fullness of the blessings of God's life. Zoe, that Zoe life. That quality of life. The blessings that comes by being a partaker of that life. The ability to enjoy it to the fullness. Hallelujah. And now in the kingdom, there are five areas that you must prosper to be called prosperous truly right there are five areas of true biblical prosperity are you seeing now that prosperity is not all about money financial prosperity is just one of the aspects of prosperity there are five areas number one spiritual prosperity spiritual prosperity i'll list them and then i'll define them this is a course this is a lecture this is not so much preaching tonight i'm teaching this is a lecture going on number two mental prosperity i'll list them and i'll explain them number three the prosperity of your health bodily prosperity the prosperity of your health your physical well-being Number four, financial prosperity. Number one, spiritual prosperity. The, the prosperity of your soul. Number two, mental prosperity. Three, bodily prosperity, your health. Number four, financial prosperity. And number five, relational prosperity. spiritual prosperity mental prosperity what's the third one bodily prosperity number four financial prosperity and number five relational prosperity if any of these areas 
are wanting in your life you are not prosperous by god's definition that means if you are a multi-millionaire are you getting my point and you are failing relationally you are failing in your health you are failing in your mind you are still short of god's definition of prosperity are you getting my point from the earth's perspective they say you are a rich man you're a multi-millionaire you're a billionaire but from heaven's standpoint you are not prosperous are you learning something spiritual prosperity what does it mean to be spiritually prosperous what does it mean to be spiritually prosperous it means to be born again what shall it profit a man the bible says if he gains the whole world and loses his soul that means what shall it profit a man if all these other aspects of prosperity are in place but he loses his soul look at me there are people and some of you are here listening to me you can kill for money you can pray in tongues you can do all of this but once it gets to money i need to hold some treasurer please give me something five thousand or six thousand let me hold it so that some of you wake up this is what you want to see some of you your mind will say now you are talking it's now you are talking to me please hallelujah spiritual prosperity if you pursue money the kind of money that takes you to hell there are many politicians many people god bless you who will contact witch doctors and all kinds of people because of money this is not what we are talking about here are you getting me there are some of you they've even taken you to some places and they said they can wash your eyes to see well let me tell you right now if it is not the word of god washing your eyes your sight is still darkness hallelujah look at this Imela, Imela, ese mo. The Lord is changing you. Don't just be laughing. Imela, help me worship Him. Imela. Look at me. This is what some of you can die for. Some of you can allow any man sleep with you and do anything because of this. There are people today that this is what will drag them to hell. Are you getting my point? People have gotten into armed robbery because of this. People have joined dangerous occultic society in this country because of this what is it about this it seems to love some people and hate others some people chase this all their life whereas others have it coming and are praying that it stops coming what makes this happen please listen to me if you let this naira and kobo take you to hell I tell you, you have made the most, the, the most foolish decision in life. Your spiritual prosperity comes before finance. Are you listening to me? Can I tell you something? It's easy to claim you love God when there is nothing much to lose. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a way a thief will come to your house. You say, thank you, carry it. All that is left is that bag. Just pick it up. The Bible says, Jesus told the rich man, do this and this and that. He said, I have kept the law even from my youth. He said, go and sell your possession. It was a test of his spiritual prosperity. He had material prosperity. He said, go and sell what you have. Give it to the poor. 
and come and follow me and the bible says the man was offended because he had much possession hallelujah at what point in your life will you stop serving god because of money one million ten million i know people who love god but one small job or one small business you just made one small five million or small 10 million and you won't hear anything again there are people they want to come and dictate to the pastor in church let's preach about about wickedness who are you to tell the pastor to because you have a personal problem with with your wife or whatever it is and because the pastor is broke and poor although anointed he will say all right say the lord just changed our sermon is titled wickedness i vowed to god and i told him lord any money you will give me that will take me to hell let it not come and i i say it before god some of you this is the first deliverance this night you will not roll on the floor but something is leaving you hallelujah look at this some of you have lied to your parents because of this some of us are playing pranks in our workplaces. You can cut corners. Christians, born again. Let me tell you something. If you're offended, I'm sorry, but I'm going to say it. There are many corrupt and wicked Christians in the body of Christ. They are born again. They are filled with the Holy Ghost. But you go and see what they do in their workplaces. Hallelujah. You sign out for goods. It's supposed to be 7 million. You now sit down with a few people and say, let's negotiate. We will give the pastor tight. And we have certain pastors. May God have mercy on ministers. When the man talks to the pastor, he says, of course, wisdom is profitable to direct. Are you a fool that you say 7 million? Make it 23 or 24 so that at least they will give you 17. And then you now bring it to church. See, we men of God will not say it because we are benefiting from it. If you buy me a jeep from that money, let me tell you the truth. Can I be honest with you? Many people will go to hell because of this thing. And tonight, you must make up your mind to be, to be, to be prosperous. Spiritually first, the other matters. Because the Bible says there is no peace to the wicked, saith the Lord. Whether it's a wicked millionaire, there is no peace. This one, money cannot give it. He said, peace I give unto you. My peace I live with you. Not as the world gives. May the Lord never give us money that will take us to hell. May the Lord never give us money that will make us partner with Satan. May the Lord never open us up to opportunities that will jeopardize our Christian life. Look at me. Wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement. It's a trust. In the kingdom, you don't achieve prosperity. You are trusted with it. In Matthew 25, the Bible says he gave them that talent. After a while, he came back to seek for accountability. This is the difference between kingdom wealth and just wealth. That you realize that I'm a steward by grace of this that God has given. Hallelujah. Oh, I like that Imela song. Can we sing it again? Imela. Help me worship him. Imela. Oh, Kaka. after me in the name of Jesus I will not let money take the place of God in my life there are some sisters right now that are not even in their houses they are in one man's house you came for koinonia but you came from somebody's house what are you looking for money he can sleep with me no problem 
because of money you mock god every time you compromise to be rich you mock god you insult god and you say god is not able but our god is jehovah jireh he's more than enough are you listening to me some of us may need to end some dangerous devilish association there are some of us students right now you are already planning to swindle your parents it's in your plan you and the group of friends you're already planning to tell them oh i'm in final year i'm in this i need two hundred thousand. and then you cut corner whether you come and stand here and drop the tide god will not honor what comes from a heart of wickedness he said because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness therefore god even thy god has anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows see many people many people many nigerians hearing this message will be angry with me they'll say you are a fool oh boy now for you are you in nigeria see i'm a young man no oh. i'm a young man i'm not 100 years old are you hearing what i'm saying i'm a young man don't think i came from one planet i grew up in this very nigeria you can walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity into the blessings of god there are many men today because of the do you know that the reason why some of our uncles cannot bless us is part of the covenant that they had in covens before they got well have you seen people like that they are so wealthy they can even give the poor but they will never help anybody in their family it's part of the agreement they have sold their soul to the devil for it i've said it again and again a man whose wife suffered with him they drank gary together they prayed together they went from house to house brought a man of god to conduct night vigil now god blesses the man and the man turns and looks at his wife and says you are not fine again money has opened his eyes the tree of the knowledge of good and evil has made him to see something he's not supposed to see hallelujah many wealthy people compromising on their wives compromising on their children they will sit down be crying and dying of hunger and the man is there servicing one one Jezebelic lady somewhere hallelujah can I tell you something whoever did not believe in you before you became blessed is not qualified to be part of your success cabinet brother if the sister cannot see what you are seeing the, when you get blessed and she comes pack your load and go don't come around and say ah i don't believe in him and then later you call him and say i'm walking in shell say, ah but you've not been calling me now now for you my brother go away run quick go and find somebody that believed in you are you getting blessed say spiritual prosperity your spiritual prosperity i did something one day years ago i put one one thousand naira plenty on the ground and i said lord i stepped on it i said lord as i'm standing on this money it will never stand above me this is my bow with you that it will never stand above me do not give me any level of resource i've told god do not bring us as a ministry to any level that will kill the fire of god in our lives suddenly the sick are not healed again the only thing we are we're, we're celebrating in koinonia is just prosperity people are not saved people are not blessed people are not healed people are not delivered they are not taught the word may god forbid it we respect prosperity but it must be holistic starting from our spiritual life many men of god don't take altar calls in churches again all that they are concerned about is money 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 everything is money even on crusade ground money everything is money can i tell you the truth money is not everything what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world satan tested jesus in this he took him up to a cliff and showed him the glory of the kingdom in a matter of time and said bow to me in other words compromise your spiritual prosperity 
and take your fine and take financial prosperity and he looked at him and he rejected that temptation many of us this is what has happened to so many people many of our parents have brought a lot of tragedy to our homes because they went to go and visit a herbalist and it backfired they won't tell anybody where they went to but in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the son of the living God nothing and no one will take the place of God in our lives for some of you this is your message tonight this is a revelation that God is giving you because the way you are pursuing this money you may lose your salvation for it there are some of us who are hustling we are in anything anything that works once you see somebody with nice words you just say how did you get it say there is something that's how you keep following how can you be so gullible that you don't care whether what it is is whether it's compromising your that's how many believers have gotten into drugs do you know how many believers deal do drug dealing including pastors many men of god in this country do drugs they do drugs many ladies go around they travel to italy you go to italy and go to uk and see how many nigerian ladies are there trying to make money they send part of the money home and their loved ones build houses and they call pastors to come and dedicate it never allow anything compromise on your faith i'm speaking to you right now there are some of you sisters there is a brother right now that is coming around your life he loves god his spiritual prosperity is sound it's just that he's on his way to balance himself financially but because of your being gullible you see a man you know this guy is not born again but you are just chasing him because of finance and then when you come to us and we ask you is he born again he say hey, he's okay okay it's not spiritual salvation is he born again with clear fruits of the spirit working in his life if he, if you truly love him bring him for koinonia let him be changed you are not the holy spirit don't carry anybody because of his money because he just parked his jeep in front of you one accident can take that jeep away but his spiritual prosperity connects him to a source that can reproduce it again and again hallelujah brothers i bring you a word of encouragement let no man despise you you are sitting down your shoe may be caught in under but trust me if your spiritual prosperity is sound eventually all these other ones that we'll talk about will come into place stop that hustling any business you want to join anything you want i just want to hustle stop it there is a way that cement right onto a man and the end thereof are the ways of death god can guide your life to walk circumspectly into a realm of abundance he said and i will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places hallelujah see there is nothing that irritates me as a man who tries to pursue money and does not value God. Go around our society, you see people with three phones, five phones, making all kinds of calls. Hello, hello, I'm, 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 the, I'm here, I'm going to this, I'm going to the airport. You go to the airport and see them, psycho fans, all kinds of people trying to make money. They want to hustle, I must make it. Can you print book? Yes. Can you fix shoe? Yes. Can you make hair? Yes. Everything you just want to hustle is not done that way. Your spiritual prosperity. There are men who stop coming to the house of God from the day they were blessed. You call them and they say, sorry, uh, I have to be in Germany now. After that, I will touch Brazil briefly and then I'll come through Ghana. May God give you the health to keep traveling. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed tonight? For as long as you have needs, it's not a big deal to pursue God. Is that true? For as long as you have needs. But let the needs be satisfied.
there are some of us who will leave God. One day they look at you and they say, Ah, madam, I used to know you in Koinonia. I said, Come on, don't talk to me like that. God, show this person whose wife I have become. Your spiritual prosperity. Your spiritual prosperity. Say in the name of Jesus, I am born again and born again for life. Not money, not power, not access, not influence will take me away from the love of Christ. The apostle speaking, he said, what shall separate us? What shall separate us from the love of Christ? There are some of us, very little things have separated you this morning. Don't get me wrong. Money is very important. That's why we are teaching it. But it's not the way many of us are going about it. Hallelujah. Number two, mental prosperity. Oh, let me define spiritual prosperity. I didn't define it. It means to be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. It means to understand the ways and the principles of the kingdom. That's what it means to prosper spiritually. That you are born again, you are filled with the Holy Ghost, and you are growing in your understanding of the operation of the kingdom. The principles of the kingdom. It also means you are conforming to the image and the character of Christ. That's what it means to prosper spiritually. To be born again. One, filled with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. It means to understand the laws of the kingdom, the operation of the kingdom, the ways of the kingdom. And then it also means to conform. Paul was speaking to the church. He said, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. The formation of Christ in us. That's what makes you humble. So you see a man who is a multi-millionaire but he's so humble. He can still be an usher in church. Is that true? There are many of us as we are right now with the little blessings that we have. You got a job with MTN or you got a job somewhere. There are some of us the way you are. You cannot even walk in the house of God. You can't clean chairs. You can't do anything. You feel too big. My father is a senator. My mother is a minister. I'm the chairman of this and that and that. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. Have you read that scripture? I this was the king with all his prosperity. He said, I'd rather leave my palace and be a doorkeeper in the house of God. Hallelujah. No matter who you are, you drop your title and money when you come to the house of God. When you come to the house of God, you are a student in the school of the spirit. And you learn with all humility and serve with all your heart. We are going to go to that scripture. The Bible says, if they obey and serve me, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh, we look to Yahweh. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. Sing it one more time that your eyes are just upon him alone. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Number two, mental prosperity. We have to hurry up so that we can pray. Is someone learning something tonight? Is God challenging somebody? Mental prosperity. It means. You are prosperous mentally when your will, your emotions, your intellect, or in short, your mind are well developed 
and deployed to improve the quality of your life. You are prosperous mentally when your mind is well developed and deployed to improve the quality of your life. Hallelujah. There are people who are not prosperous mentally, madmen. Those who are going through all kinds of depression, they are not prosperous mentally. You don't want to be rich financially and then have all kinds of mental issues. Wrong mindsets. That's lack of mental prosperity. Notice my definition. That your mind, which consists of your will, your emotion and your intellect, are well developed and deployed. Imagine a man who is born from a rich family. How many of you have seen what we call imbeciles? Not an insult now. Have you seen those kind of people? How many of you have seen them, those who are born from rich families? They are very wealthy, but they can't think. Are you getting my point? They are not smart. They have loss of memory. That's lack of mental prosperity. You need to be alert. You need to be sharp. You need to be intelligent. You need to be able to articulate yourself and articulate the things of the kingdom. Intelligence is very useful in kingdom advancement. When you read Acts chapter 18, the last five verses, it talks about the encounter of, of who? Apollos now, right? Apollos. When he met Aquila and Priscilla, he, the Bible says he was a learned man. His mind was developed. The kingdom does not make people dull. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And Daniel was of an excellent spirit. There are many of us, we can't remember anything. I know people that even at age 19, 20, they cannot spell their names. They need prayers. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your mind must be developed. It's not enough to just be blessed. And they call you and they say, please, go and make a speech. Talk to a few people who are trusting God for blessings. And you just stand and just speak nonsense around, but you are a millionaire. You are not blessing anybody. Your mind must be alert so that you can transfer the knowledge you know to bless others. If you are not mentally prosperous, your prosperity cannot go far because you cannot help others to come to that place. And the beauty of the kingdom is not only that you attain a state, but you can guide others to come to that place it says, in thee, Genesis 12 verse 2, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Hallelujah. And how shall they be saved when there is no preacher? How shall they experience that dimension of salvation until there is somebody who is mentally sound? Bill Johnson wrote a book years ago, The Supernatural Power of a Transformed Mind. Many people concentrate on their spirits and they forget about their minds. They don't develop their minds they are so unintelligent they are not articulate this is why they cannot get jobs i i spoke i spoke with a few with the final yesterday and yesterday and we'll talk about that in the natural laws your mind is a useful tool in your well-being in this life don't throw away your mind just because you are spiritual i said it that there are some graduates in nigeria that are not employable they are not employable you want to be a secretary you cannot even write a formal letter how are you you are writing you letter you question mark because we have not seen the value of developing our minds the renewal of your mind through books through tapes cleaning and learning let me tell you something i love it when i see competent people we're going to talk about competence i hate incompetence because no one has a right to be incompetent. Incompetence is a direct pro product of laziness and a lackadaisical attitude. Favor answers to the gift and the value of a man. I was speaking to the final year students. We'll still talk about it. There are many lazy people around. Mentally lazy. They don't read books. They don't attend seminars. They don't do nothing. All they want is for money to just come. Have you seen people in ABU here who, who tell you that whether I write exams or not, all I want 
is just that certificate. My uncle, who is a politician, they are mentally lazy. They are the type that don't build roads well. They collect contract and build nonsense. And the roads are swelling up as if they are, they, are, they are pumping fire under them. These are the kinds of people who are mentally, they are not prosperous mentally. It's not enough to be sound spiritually. Believers are not idiots. The kingdom does not produce dull people. Say I'm smart. Say it, I'm intelligent. The kingdom does not make foolish people. We are articulate. We can step into systems and legislate on behalf of the kingdom. But it comes through mental preparation. There are certain things I do every day before I sleep. Can I tell you something? It's not everything that you see here that is just anointing as in dash. Are you getting what I'm saying? Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, but this grace was not showered on me in that I labored more than ye all. And what is that labor? He spoke about the labor in the word and prayer. Not just word alone, revelation. Hallelujah. We're going to have a workshop. This Saturday, we're having a workshop for all the heads of department. The little level of excellence that God has given us as a ministry is not dash. It didn't come by magic. It's not just by prayer. Everybody say mental development. I'm challenging you right now because there are many of us that hate anything that has to do with developing our minds. You bring a book to study. Say, Kai, this book is 200 pages. It's too much. But do you like money? Yes. You want to be blessed? Yes. There are many people who are fighting for offices that God himself will not let them get there because they cannot legislate on behalf of the kingdom when they get there. I was listening to Sanusi, the CBN governor. Now, I'm not a politician. I don't want to know what is happening. I mean, I, I, what I, I'm, it's not that I'm not concerned. I'm just saying I'm not involved in all of this. But I, I love those that are in charge of the financial sectors of Nigeria, among other reasons. They are smart. Are you getting my point? Sanusi is a genius. He's intelligent. He's not daft at all. Very smart. Very articulate. They understand the system. And then Ngozi... Oh, she's smart. Do you know those who are her referees? Referees of her CV. Presidents of nations. The way you have your uncle and your auntie referee you. You think a president will come and jeopardize his integrity on somebody's CV. They are very intelligent and smart people. And that's why their intelligence frustrates a lot of gullible politicians who want something for nothing. Can I tell you something? Mental prosperity will bring you to a place where no gender barrier, no religious barrier will stop you. There are some things they cannot just do without you. The whole world stood still for Nelson Mandela. He was not just a, a human rights activist. That guy was a brilliant man. Hallelujah. God is speaking to someone. Have you been neglecting your mental prosperity? You want to go into business. What do you know about business? Nothing. Name five top business people, both in the kingdom and around, who are doing anything. I don't know. All I just know is that I will sow a seed. And my God, Jehovah Sharp Sharp, the one who can break protocol. Listen, listen, listen. That kind of teaching only makes men of God prosperous. It doesn't make members prosperous. That's why everybody wants to be a pastor. Because based on that template that is given, when you raise people who are mentally prosperous, they will be blessed. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Be smart. The Bible says when they called Daniel and all the other people, he articulated a level of mental prowess that was 10 times better. Ten times better and he reigned through the dispensation of three kings nobody removed him lay your hands on your head everybody and prophesy to yourself say in the name of Jesus I will develop my mind in the name of Jesus I contend for mental prosperity I study books and resources that empower my mind along the area of destiny hallelujah hallelujah i read books on leadership consistently i'm sharing some of these things with you not as a way of boasting i hope you understand i just want to encourage you hallelujah 
have understood the largest churches across all the continents of the world what do they understand whatever is not godly about them i kick it away but i'm studying what is their mindset like how are the leaders like the world leadership conference that happens every year i make sure that i studied i was listening to dangote's speech in lagos business school and i was wild i said this guy is not daft though. this guy is not daft it's not just cement that made him rich hallelujah who is developing your mind you will keep being angry and remain mediocre in life don't just depend on your degree go for knowledge create a university for yourself youtube is free google is free stop browsing those devilish things you know what i'm talking about and concentrate study the lives of leaders god has told you you are going to be a leader it will not just happen by prayer and fasting there are many people who are bad church pastors although they are born again because they know nothing about church leadership they know nothing about corporate financing on saturday we are having a workshop with the leaders we are not just going to be praying alone it's a time of appraisal it's a time of teaching it's a time of training i like you from today make up your mind that mentally there are some people that if god tells them today stop preaching they are failures for life because there is nothing else there is no other way they can add value to people this is what makes people think that pastors are dollars they are the ones who have failed in life everything has refused to work then they just say let's go to the vineyard the vineyard is not a place for stupid people it takes intelligence to plot the land am i challenging you now because there are some of us who are carried away just that okay i'm on maybe your cgp i'm on 3.5 i'm on five points and you think what you have it may not necessarily be mental prosperity you need to go for knowledge go for knowledge there are few seminars that train pastors most of ministers meetings are just manifest and there is a place for that everybody is falling and rolling from morning till night they carry an anointing with a dull head and they go to do ministry and things don't just work out hallelujah i'm challenging you to hate laziness you are too young to be lazy no matter how old you are sleeping for six for, for, for six, seven, eight, nine hours. Not at this level of life. You've got to challenge yourself. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your head one more time and just pray in one minute. And say, Lord, from today, this spirit of laziness, this spirit of lack of mental development, Jordan Bookstore is here. We keep announcing it. Go and get books that will build you. Challenge yourself. Yes, you are spiritual. What do you know around the area you believe God has called you in? Mental prosperity. Change us, oh God. Give us a paradigm shift. Help us to appreciate the place of competence and excellence in our lives and our endeavors. Hallelujah. 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 No day of your life should pass without you developing your mind. And don't let no spiritual person come and tell you that what you are doing is not serious. Just focus on your spiritual life. There are people who all they are doing is fasting and praying. Fasting and praying will not replace the price of mental development. Are you getting my point? We use spirituality to excuse a lot of responsibilities. Buy the truth. It didn't say receive it as, as an impartation. Buy it. Let it cost you. Hallelujah. Number three. Let's hurry up. Is God changing somebody tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Mental prosperity. Invest in your mind. Honor your mind. It will honor you tomorrow. Honor your mind. Honor your mind. Invest in your mind. Invest in wisdom. Invest in wisdom. Invest in books. Get materials. Jordan, please stand up. Please quickly stand up. That's Jordan's bookstore there. We don't have a ministry bookstore. That's our official bookstore. 
he just came with some materials and we keep telling there are some of you when you stroll you don't say how much once they say 500 naira you leave it you've been buying with one for years put something inside not on top put something inside not on top <laughs> brothers you better don't laugh because i've not finished talking i've not finished talking something inside not on top what does it profit us if we have a very beautiful lady who is mentally poor you are not encouraging the man the journey is getting harder because of your presence change ladies don't sit back there waiting for one man to come and marry you begin to contend for mental prosperity it's not all about Brazilian hair or Chinese hair no invest in your mind don't let no man drag you like a house girl because he came and met you a liability. Be an asset. It's only the ladies that clap. Don't worry. The brothers are suspecting that I'm coming and surely I will come. Hallelujah. I've said it to our brothers again and again. And I will say it. Listen. Honestly, I'm saying this from the depths of my heart. My brother, you have no business looking at any lady if you have not sorted out. Part of the things you must sort out is your mental prosperity. You are going out with her to where? Where is the map? Where is it? There are many of us that just like women. We just like any. You just, that marriage thing is eating you up. Calm down and settle down your life. Just let our sisters come and receive and go back. Train yourself. There is a level that you too you will not have tried. Where her, her father will even see you. Or her, you think I'll carry my daughter and give yeah, yeah. No. No. My brother, if I give you my daughter, you too you will know I tried. No way. I'm not talking about coming with a jeep. I'm coming about coming with substance. You sit down, the father is asking, he said, young man, so what do you understand? What's your mindset about prosperity, fatherhood? I say, well, when a man is 30 years, the man is saying, ah, no mental prosperity. No mental prosperity. Even if you speak spiritual languages, my daddy, I thank you. You have a similar name with my geo. The man is asking a simple question. What do you understand about fatherhood? Hallelujah. Many of us are allowing spirituality to make us dull. God is speaking to you tonight. You better dust off that thing. Tell yourself, I will be competent. I won't go anywhere and any man relegates me to the background. Being a Christian is not just to start prayer and start opening prayer and end it. You have something to say. A man of God said, don't just say something, have something to say. Don't just say something, have something to say. There are those that are saying something, but there are men that have something to say. Job was one of those men. Although he was born again, unbelievers and everybody testified he was an intelligent man. The opening of his mouth was the, 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 the unfailing of wisdom. Job, in the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord were upon my tabernacle, he said the young men saw me and they fled the elders saw me and they bowed their head what level of competence will make a man become a global voice because there are some of you nigeria is too small for you but you need to push yourself higher the way you are now god cannot lift you you can't represent him properly number three bodily prosperity let's leave this mental thing hallelujah hallelujah Health. Everybody say health is wealth. Say it again. Health is wealth. To be prosperous bodily means to be free from sickness. To be free from disease. To be free from infirmity. To be free from yokes and oppressions. 
of darkness. Let me take it again quickly. To be free from sickness, to be free from disease, to be free from infirmity, to be free from yokes and oppressions of darkness. When that state becomes a reality in your life, you are prosperous in your health. There are many rich men who are sick. They are sick. There are people who take drugs all the time. And this is not mockery. But I'm just contending. This is why we have times when we pray. And if you are part of those people as you are listening to me now, I want you to know that the anointing of the spirit is moving from this word. And that devil of oppression over your body lives right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You must believe it's God's desire for you to be healthy. Sam Adeyemi said something. He said many people punish their health to be rich. Then they use their money to maintain their health. They kill themselves health-wise so that they can be rich. Now when they become rich, what happens? They use their money to maintain their health. Hypertension, all kinds of things. The man is a billionaire but he's seen people. He's seen things. You sit down and you are quarreling. Later your wife taps you and says, no, you are okay. Nobody is, is taking the money because something is wrong with you. Even if you buy the wheelchair for one million, you are still on a wheelchair. Hallelujah. All kinds of people. Do you know that God wants you to experience prosperity in your health? Because if you are not prosperous in your health, you cannot be agile. Joshua said, my strength is still as it were in the days of my youth. Some of us, 25, 30, 40, you're already behaving as if you are 100. They say, stand up now, you just drag yourself. Come on now. We used to sing one song, shake, shake, shake into the fire. Shake off laziness. Shake off all of those things. I'm young and strong. That's what you must tell yourself. Some of us hate it when they say you are young. You say, how can I be young? Do I look young? Continue. That's a revelation you must get out of your mind. What is wrong in being young? Being young doesn't mean being small or childish. It means being alive. Strong. Carry this speaker. When you carry it, you hold your back as if you just gave birth. No. No. This is one of the secrets of our parents, fathers and mothers. You see a woman 70 years old. There are many things that she can do. Even the children are lazy. You wash three or four or five clothes and you sit down. You say, Kai, I had a busy day. Whereas that's what your mother was doing from the day you were born until you became 30 years that you are. Hallelujah. Say, I'm strong in my body. And there are certain things that can help you to maintain good health. It's not everything that is demonic. Try and eat well. You may not have all the means now, but please eat well. Turn and tell your neighbor, eat well. There are some of us, the wickedness you are doing to yourself, the, re the revenge will come in the future. Some of us, you've been taking Gary from almost throughout this week. And it's not like, yes, of course, things are not there yet, but come on now, Abba. Go to your friend's room, let him help you. What is all that? Don't starve yourself. If you're fasting, fine. If you're not fasting, eat well. Understand about balanced diet. It doesn't take money. It just takes wisdom. With the 300 naira you used to buy for more all. 300 naira for more. Break it down. Have a balanced diet. Start from somewhere. Start from somewhere. Some of us are rich. But we are making foolish nutritional decisions very foolish biscuit in the morning this puff puff or whatever you are just eating every kind of thing be strong they ate garlic they ate cucumber do you know why they were strong that was part of the reason they ate onion they ate a lot of things don't let this this tv people fool you look at the person who is advertising he is not healthy look at what is advertising to you See, that's why you see people in the village. They are not born again. But 95, they are still strong. No glasses. Take water regularly. 
not just juice you go to sit down somewhere they give you 50 cl minerals only you now you take it a few minutes later see listen don't just laugh i'm very serious many of us have never paid attention i used to be like that anything just comes until the day the lord began to caution me and say mr man if you want to stay long be careful thank god we have a welfare department that does justice celebrate them where are you welfare wave your hands proudly hallelujah that's part of the reason why we can teach and shout because we know when we are done there is honorarium <laughs> hallelujah some of you need to help your parents with this decision they may not have the variety to cook well now you have you've had some level of orientation must you let them die like that prematurely? go and help them say in the name of jesus i make up my mind to stay strong and healthy do you know what the bible calls gluttony have you have you have you, have you heard of that word gluttony excessive eating is is not just about desire there are some of us anything you see it must finish before you rest there is pressure on you and poverty is part of that cause see let me tell you something i used to like a lot of things i thought i liked it now i know i, I don't like it they just bring bread in your house you are used to the 2020 era on and they bring one nice one the type that has coconut in it you can't sleep you are restless you can't wait for the next day it's poverty prosperity gives you calmness options that's why you can see a rich man he just comes he takes one small piece of chicken and it's okay and you are just sweating let this man leave that table let me come and show him how to eat come on now i forbid you from being poor in the name of jesus <laughs> growing up we used to hope that our father will finish eating not because i guess it's me my mother just gave him that husband treat and the thing pain us as children we'll just be hoping there are some houses well god will help us let me not say anything eat meat take take a balanced diet try try do your best do your best do your best number four financial prosperity this is where we'll soon stop and pray financial prosperity what does it mean to be prosperous financially number one or this is just a general definition it means freedom from poverty lack and the effects that come with them freedom from poverty freedom from lack and freedom from the effects that these things come with there are things that follow poverty fear insecurity greed hatred anger you see that so financial prosperity is freedom from what poverty lack and the effects that come with them it also means having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish and sustain it having abundant financial supply alongside the means to replenish and sustain it that's what financial prosperity is having what abundant what did i say abundant financial supplies but it's not enough you can have abundance today and you will not be able to help somebody after 10 years but the ability to replenish it are you seeing that now replenish it and sustain it that's financial prosperity thank you jesus that's someone's portion in the name that is above all names in the in, at the end of this this teaching you will be free from poverty lack and the effects that come with them i hope you wrote that there are effects that come fear greed self-centeredness insecurity inferiority all these things are things that come alongside 
poverty. There are houses that have shops and even if the child takes pure water, the father must force the child to look for five naira and bring. It's not just business sense. That one has gone beyond the Jordan. That is poverty. Greed. Because you have very little, you cannot release. Part of the reasons why politicians release a lot is because there is an ATM around the corner. So they can give you one million and go and fetch it back. But there is a way you can bless people. And as you bless, your band keeps increasing. Yeah. Proverbs 3 from verse 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. It says, So shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy vats or thy one presses to overflow. Hallelujah. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Finally, relational prosperity. What good is your money if there is nobody to celebrate with? There are many of us who have destroyed relationship with our family members, with our friends, with everybody because of money. We say to hell with everybody. Once I make money, the money will become my friend. There are many rich people who are lonely today because they've, they've they worked on everybody in their life. And right now they are alone. Relational prosperity. What does it mean? Having quality relationships. Please write. Having quality relationships that give opportunities to express love and care. Having quality relationships that gives opportunities to express love and care, comma, improve yourself, comma, learn, share, affect, and impact lives. Just be writing. And build a lasting legacy for generations that follow. Listen. There is a dimension of your life that must be prepared to leave legacy after you if Christ tarries. Not necessarily when you are gone. In your lifetime, you can build a legacy and bless others. I'll repeat it again. Having quality relationships that give opportunities to express love and care, comma, you need to express love and care. You need to improve yourself and relationships give you that platform. You need to learn Relational prosperity gives you the opportunity to learn. You need to share. You need to share. You cannot share with yourself. You need to affect and impact lives. Without relational prosperity, there's no platform to affect and impact lives. For instance, I'm relating with you right now as I have the opportunity to teach you. I'm talking with you. You're responding back to me. There's relational prosperity. And to build a lasting legacy for generations that follow today we are able to learn some of these things because our fathers and those who have gone ahead of us among other accomplishments they were able to sustain relational prosperity so they wrote books that we can interact with hallelujah they held meetings that we attended that blessed us I'll end this teaching today by defining what financial dominion is. Today is just introduction. Financial dominion. What is it? Thank you, Jesus. Financial dominion, therefore, is the ability to totally conquer lack, poverty, financial hardship, alongside the effects they bring financial dominion is the ability to totally totally mark that word totally conquer lack poverty financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring what are the effects 
fear, insecurity, greed, self-centeredness, unrighteousness. I'll take it again. Fear, insecurity, greed, self-centeredness, unrighteousness. All of these are effects. That means at the end of this series, you should be equipped to make this definition a reality in your life. Say amen. amen. That you will be equipped with the tools to help you conquer lack, poverty, financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring. Realize that financial dominion is a journey. It's a journey. You journey into it. I can't take you there using this teaching but I can equip you with the tools and guide you to get there. It will take a while but as surely as the day breaks after the night that financial dominion is a reality. Bishop Oyedeko came to speak at Dunamis and he made a statement that broke me. He said not everybody is struggling hallelujah because of the recession and everything that happens around he said not everybody is struggling there are people who by grace and wisdom have been able to ride above when the flood came as it was killing others it was lifting noah's ark and it dropped it at mount ararat hallelujah we are going to pray and i want us to pray seriously just five minutes prayer, but it's very serious. Rise up on your feet, everybody. I'd like you to begin to thank God for this series. I told you it's a revolution. It will do something in your life. Inside and outside, begin to pray and bless the Lord. Say, Lord, I bless you for the opportunity to hear this. Free of charge, you're not paying anything. The word of the Lord is coming to challenge you. We've said a lot today. Challenging you on what prosperity is. Challenging you on seeing the need to be financially free. And that it is possible. Lift your voice and give him praise. Say Lord thank you. Finally the way out. For the tragedy of my family has come. Finally the answer to my prayer has come. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Ambroso kataba ba 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 ba. Le krato shekete le koso ba da ba da ba. Ambrosko prekete le ba shkepla shekete. Many of us will give God thanks. Many of us will give God thanks. Years to come, your generation will thank you for paying attention and inclining your ears to these words. hallelujah 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 i like us to pray and say lord i make up my mind that my journey starts this night lift your voice i make up my mind some of you have not started any journey but make up your mind that it starts today and it will not stop till you enter your financial destiny make up your mind Lord, from today I take responsibility. I take responsibility over my financial destiny. I take responsibility for the sake of my destiny, for the sake of the kingdom, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of my generation. Challenge yourself in prayer. I take responsibility in the name of Jesus. I lay aside childishness. I take responsibility. Don't say I'm too young. Don't say I'm a lady. Don't say I'm a student. Don't say I'm unmarried. Don't say I'm too old. No. Failure to hearken to this word will punish you in the future. Make sure you take it seriously. Don't just be emotional about it. Let there be a determination in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
one last prayer you're going to say lord help me you will need the help of god in this series and in this journey some of us what you have had today has rattled you some of you are angry some of you are offended trust me this is part of what this this course will do to you and it will build you hallelujah it will take meekness you're going to say lord help me lift your voice and pray help me help me help me help me help me oh god i seek the help of the mighty god as we progress in this journey help me help me understand help me apply the things that i'm taught hallelujah hallelujah next week we'll take the other aspect and then we'll also give you recommended books i'm sorry i didn't write some of them i don't just want to mention books anyhow it's not every book you need to read there are few books that when you get you will get most of the things there are many financial books but there are few books that have the quality of what you need hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah father we thank you now while you're standing there are a few people here right now we spoke about spiritual prosperity and as we began to speak the lord was telling you that this is it it's not enough to just be rich inside and outside everybody listen it's not enough to just be prosperous remember we started by talking about our spiritual prosperity and there are some of us here you have struggled and tonight the lord wants to give you rest the lord wants to give you rest the bible says come unto me all ye that are heavy laden and i will give you rest today is the day you will make that decision and say jesus i'm not only giving you my financial life i want you to take everything the worship team led us in a powerful song take all of me there are some of you you have given your life to christ but you have not given your all and tonight you're saying lord no more backsliding no more one leg in one leg out may i invite you right now inside and outside wherever you are you want to start a fresh relationship with jesus christ or you have given your heart to the lord but you found yourself derailing welcome the lord is inviting you right now please come wherever you are inside and outside wherever you are don't sit back hallelujah inside and outside don't wait for anybody to come there are people the lord is talking to inside and outside god bless you as you're coming god bless you they are coming appreciate them there are many people outside you need to be born again even if you have a christian name you need to give your heart to jesus god bless you god bless you keep coming keep coming we'll give you one more minute just stand and face me god bless you some of you as you're standing the lord is speaking to you don't let your friends stop you this is the beginning of an experience motivate them koinonia appreciate them as they come god bless you god bless you welcome home god bless you let this be the beginning of an authentic experience god bless you god bless you hallelujah hallelujah now listen to me thank you so much for coming the bible says for as many who will come keep coming hallelujah the bible says he will in no wise cast away i want you to know that although this is a financial seminar this is a financial teaching this is a series on finance but that this is the beginning of your life hallelujah that at any level of your life you can make up your mind and start with jesus christ and i welcome you lift your right hand and say this as loud as you can say after me lord jesus i love you i truly believe in you i ask you to forgive my sins and cleanse me from unrighteousness tonight i've heard your word and i made jesus lord of my life from today i denounce sin satan and the works of the flesh holy spirit come and live in me strengthen me make me a believer in the name of jesus christ as you prosper me financially let me also prosper spiritually 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you. You brought these ones by your grace. And I pray that this will not just be an emotional recitation, but this will be a genuine experience that will culminate into the quality of your life in every aspect. Empower them. Give them spiritual prosperity. Give them financial prosperity in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare that the hand of God is strong upon you. You'll never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I'd like you to follow the ushers. Just follow the gentleman waving his hands. There's a group of people who will welcome you and they will give you some details. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, while we prepare to take the announcement, if this is your first time of coming for our meeting, this is your first time of attending Koinonia, we love you, we celebrate you. I'd like you to jump up on your seat and come out quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly, this is your first time inside and outside. You're welcome. Please come. Please come. God bless you. God bless you. Appreciate them, Koinonia. God bless you. No matter how far, you are welcome. We have a prayer and a blessing for you. Just come out and stand here. We celebrate you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you so much for coming. Please keep coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. A meeting put together by Eternity Network International. We are here every Friday. We really celebrate you for coming. We bless you. We honor you. Thank you for coming. We truly, truly appreciate you. And I assure you that your life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for you right now. And ask that the hand of God will come upon your life. Stretch your hands towards them saints and prophesy. When we bless you here, you are blessed. When we speak over your life, it will come to pass. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless them. We bless you with the blessings of this house. We bless you with hunger for spiritual things. We bless you with wisdom. We bless you with the presence of God. We bless you with favor. You will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salmon, and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you